Okay, so here we are. We have some notion of the definition of an integral, but how do we actually do computations? It does not seem like a good idea to write down these Riemann sums and take a limit as the mesh size goes to zero. Oh gosh, Ooh. what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to answer that question in the next chapter more fully, but for now, let's just stick to a simple example or two, something that we can integrate. Since Riemann sums are, are, are so difficult, we need to fall back to something that makes sense. And one thing that makes sense is volume. Consider the integral of the function 5 over the unit ball in R3. Now I'm integrating with respect to dx. I could write that out in terms of coordinates as dx, dy, dz, and express this as a triple integral where I'm integrating five with respect to the volume element, an infinitesimal box with dimensions dx, dy, dz. That volume element, dv, integrates to give us volume. The integral of dv is simply v. The five, because it's a constant, comes out in front since integration is linear. So I know what the volume of a unit ball is. That's 4 thirds pi. So in the end, I get 20 thirds times pi. Now that's that's kind of cheap, but that is an integral that we can compute because we do understand volume. We could do the same thing in R2 with area. Consider the integral of the function 4 over the rectangular region in the plane where the x and y coordinates vary between negative 2 and positive 1. This is expressible as a double integral with respect to the area element dx dy, this infinitesimal rectangle with dimensions dx and dy. That is the area element. I could also write that as dA, and dA integrates to A. The 4 comes out in front because integration is linear, and I get 4 times the area of this square of side length 3, 4 times 9, 36. There you go. Now, this is kind of um, silly. We're just integrating constants, but it's something that we can do. And this makes sense with the mass analogy that we have used. If I want to compute the mass of an object with constant density, I'm really just multiplying that density by the volume of the region over which we're integrating. That makes sense. That's exactly what we've done in this case. You might find that mass analogy really helpful moving forward.